A number written in exponential notation looks something like 4 to the third power. This small upper number we refer to as an exponent or a power. The lower number we refer to as the base. If asked to write this number in expanded form or factored form, you're to write 4 times 4 times 4. Basically, factors are things that are multiplied, so this makes sense. If you're asked to evaluate or simplify, then you simply multiply to find the value. So 4 times 4 gives you 16. Bring down this next digit. Sometimes I cross these out as I use them. 16 times 4 is 64. Another example of a number in exponential notation would be 2 to the fifth. And again, this 5 is the exponent or the power. The 2 is the base. Writing this in expanded form or factored form. And if we want to evaluate or simplify, we multiply all these. So I've used all these up. Now, at this point I can multiply in any order, thanks to commutativity of multiplication. I'll just proceed from left to right. So this gives us, bring down the 2. So I've used these up. And then 16 times 2 is 32. These two situations can cause a little confusion. So I just want to emphasize that the exponent applies to what it touches and nothing more. With this expression, it's a little bit easier to see that the exponent of 2 only applies to the y. So if I write this out in expanded or factored form, we would show it in this form. But in this example, the 2 only applies to the 3. So if I want to show this in factored form and then simplify it, this yields 9, and this negative sign simply drops down. However, in this case, the 2 is touching the parentheses. So you have two sets of parentheses, each with a negative 3, and negative 3 times negative 3 yields a positive 9. Now with powers of 10, there's a pattern that's pretty easy to pick up on, and it gets used a lot in mathematics, um, definitely gets used in scientific notation. So 10 to the second in factored form, simply 10 times 10. If we evaluate or simplify this, we get 100. For 10 to the third, in factored form, 10 times 10 times 10. If we evaluate this, we get 100. Bring this down, times 10. And then 100 times 10, I don't want to show the multiplication, but you have 100. And when you multiply by 10, you tack on another 0 for the answer. And finally, for 10 to the fourth, in factored form, multiplying this out, and again here, I don't want to show 100 times 100, but the result is you tack on two more zeros, 
So the pattern may be obvious right now. Um, I'll point it out explicitly. 10 to the second leaves you with two zeros. 10 to the third leaves you with three. And 10 to the fourth leaves you with four. This pattern is dependable. It continues forever. So 10 to the fifth would have five zeros. If you're given 100 and asked to write it as a power of 10, you simply put the base of 10, count the zeros, and you know this to be correct. For 1,000, you put your base of 10, count the zeros, and you know this is correct. And finally, for 10,000, the base of 10 and four zeros. I'd like to go over some examples that may look strange. One to the third, well this means one times one times one, so obviously that's equal to one. Even if you have something like one to the seventeenth, I'm not going to write the factored form, but if I'm asked to evaluate or simplify, I'm going to put a one. Any non-zero number to the zero power might seem like it should equal a zero, but in fact, it's equal to a one. The reason for this is a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but I'll mention it briefly. Any non-zero number to the zero power can be thought of as that number over itself. And this is because in order to do this division, one way I can do that is to subtract exponents. So this is 5 to the first and 5 to the first. As long as the bases are the same, you can actually subtract exponents. 1 minus 1 is 0. So that's how you get 5 to the 0. And obviously 5 over 5 is equal to 1. Again, this is what I've just mentioned here is a little beyond the scope of this video. Uh, I will be talking about negative exponents in a future video, and at that point this may become a little bit more clear. What you have to hang on to is when you see a value raised to a zero power, the answer is 1. Even if it's 19 to the zero power, it's 1. And that can be thought of as 19 over 19. When you have a situation like this, um, here's these parentheses again. The zero is, I say touching, I mean it's right next to the parentheses. So what's inside the parentheses becomes a one. This case, the zero is touching the four. It has nothing to do with that negative. If I want to include this negative, I have to put parentheses around it. So here, 4 to the 0 becomes 1, and you have to keep up with this negative. And finally, x to the 0 power, provided x is not equal to 0, x to the 0 power is 1. And you can think of that as x over x. Even though I don't know its value, something divided by itself is 1. So just to be clear what the simplified form is, 5 to the 0 is 1. In this case, we get positive 1. But in this case, we get a negative 1. And here again, we get a 1. If you'd like some practice with these concepts, as long as you're at my website, I have a worksheet along with a detailed answer key.